there, how are you? Today is another edition of DT Linda Gross, The Caveman Formula. This is an excerpt from my book, The Caveman Formula, which you can find on Amazon. Just Google it, The Caveman Formula. Today I want to talk to you about territorialization. Gosh, big word, what does that mean? Much like in the animal uh, kingdom, in the, in the canine kingdom, I should say, you know how dogs are walking along when it's time to pee with their owner and they, they mark their territory, they, they mark the grass with their urine, and that is to signify to other dogs that this is their turf. Well, today I want to talk to you that women do the same thing. It's not that women are being deceptive or manipulative. Don't even give them that much credit. They just are not aware that they do these things. But I want you, the men, to be aware that they do these things so you can um, you know, exert a little control over the situation and not be subject to her womanizing you, which in essence, this is what her territorializing um, you does. It takes away your manhood, it strips it away, and you're kowtowing to what she wants to do. Okay, so there are three obvious ways, that, well I consider them obvious, they're going to be new to you, but there are three ways that, the, that women, that the tactics, there are three tactics that women use to accomplish this goal. The first one is holding the purse. All right, so let's say uh, she's going to the mall and she's going to try on clothes and she just says something to the effect of, honey, would you hold my purse while I try on these clothes? Okay, let's examine. Why is she doing this? Can't she take the purse in the try-on room with her? Of course she could, but she doesn't want to do that. And the reason why she doesn't want to do that is because most dressing rooms are women-only dressing rooms or sex-appropriate uh, dressing rooms, meaning that men can't come you know, into the dressing room with her because there are other women that are changing their clothes and et cetera, et cetera. So because she's in the dressing room and because you are outside where you are out of her field of view and she cannot see what you're doing, but more importantly, she, she cannot see what other women who are walking across your path are doing with you or to you. So, she gives you her purse so you can hold on to this purse um, while she's getting changed. Now, what does that accomplish for her? It sends out a message to any woman passerby, stand down, this is my man, he's already spoken for, and here's my purse to prove it. All right, so that's a form of territorialization. What should you do if you're caught in that situation? I want you to ask your you or your, your, your uh, female partner this following question. What would you, the woman, do if I weren't here? Hmm, what would she do? Uh, well, I have been known to not want to take my purse into the dressing room. So what I would do if I were shopping alone is sometimes I take my driver's license, my credit card, and my car keys only and stick them into my jacket pocket and I put the purse in the trunk. So if I really don't want to have the purse with me while I'm changing clothes in and out, in and out, that's what I would do. Leave it in the trunk. Or if I don't know I'm going to have a change day, like I just saw, saw a blouse or a dress at the last minute, um, yes, I would be taking my purse into the try-on room with me. So what? You know, you do what you have to do. Okay. So just keep in mind, if, uh, if you weren't there, what would she be doing with the purse? So just be aware that this is one form of what I call territorialization. Okay, um, number B of the same thing, holding the purse. You're at a restaurant and she says, honey, would you uh, hold my purse while I go to the restroom? Well, 
you know, a lot of restrooms are nasty and sometimes the hooks are broken and, you know, you really don't want to put your nice purse on the floor and, you know, it's just, it's just all ugly. And it's hard to prop up the purse while you're going to pee if there's no rack and there's no hook and there's no shelf. Okay, I get it. I get it. Um, once again, you could ask, well, what would you do if you weren't there in the restaurant? Okay. All right, let's examine what she does and why she's asking you to hold her purse while she goes to the bathroom at the restaurant. Now, watch how she does it. She almost will never quietly just like, you know, eyeball the purse, eyeball you and get up and leave to where both of you have like a secret message that that's what she's doing. She almost never does that because that's not territorialization. Once again, she's away, you're out of her field of view and she's going way down there to the bathroom. There's 30 women out there. They could be the hostess, they could be the server, they could be other customers, they could be somebody at her table, somebody not at her table. There's all kinds of potential women out there who may approach you. That's why she's afraid. So usually, watch her tactic, be very aware of this. Usually, she will stand up and announce to the whole restaurant in a loud enough voice, honey, will you hold my purse? Okay, so there's nothing subtle about it. She's saying this to where 30 people can hear it at the same time. That's her point because she's going to send, send this message that you belong to her. Okay, that's one way of emasculating you and don't put up with it. So what can you do instead? Um, you can, you know, ask her to take the purse with you, with her, or for the next time, like offline, away from the restaurant, away from your other diners, um, just say the two of you need a code. If she really doesn't want to take the purse, she doesn't need to make some grand entrance, some grand announcement, like she's giving her the speech of her life, just have a code that she's gonna leave it on the chair catch your eye and then, you know, the two of you have that code and then she'll go to the bathroom without the purse. That's all that is, uh, that is necessary. I also want you to be mindful. If it really were to do with the purse, she could have given it to the girlfriend. Let's say you double dated. She could have given it to the girlfriend. Guess what? A thousand and one percent of the time, she never gives it to the girlfriend. She never says, Jennifer, hey Jennifer, would you please watch my purse while I go to the bathroom? Never. So it has nothing to do with the purse. It has to do with she wants to corral you. She wants to send an announcement to other women that you are taken. Okay, topic number two how she does this is she sends you to the drugstore or market to buy tampons. Hmm. Now, why would she do that? You know, there are all kinds of ways. I mean, for me, you know, what I would do is I would hide tampons everywhere. I put some tampons in, in the in the car, I put them in my luggage, I put them in my makeup bag, I put them in my regular bag. I mean, I put them in my desk drawer. There were all kinds of places that I would have tampons that I never asked a guy to go get me tampons. Um, I would say, you know, I must be the one-off because 99% of women do ask the guy to go get tampons. So again, why is she doing this? Um, she is doing this because when you're in that checkout line, obviously the tampon is not for you. When you're in that checkout line, she yes, she sent you to the store to get, you know, milk and eggs and some and hamburger meat, um, which is fine. But guess what? She's putting tampons on that list too, because that sends a message to other female shoppers that you are taken. Okay, I want you to really be aware of this. So what can you say um, to, to counter this when she asks you about the tampons? Um, is it okay to drive her to the store to, for her to buy the tampons? Yes, it is. 
you can drive her to the store and then the second you hit the door you make a beeline to uh you know men's health or the magazine section or some guy section of the store and you will wait in your guy section of the store while she picks out the tampons you are not to go into the tampon aisle at all because that's also an announcement whether you're with her or without her that's an announcement and you want to avoid that so you'll drive her to the store you might even go in the store but you go do your guy thing you know go look at shirts or whatever you're going to be looking at or flip-flops or razor blades or shaving cream or whatever it is but you are not to be found in the tampon aisle territorialization all right and finally, let's get to number three. What's the third favorite way that these women use? Um, I, I affectionately like to refer to them as a shoe dog, meaning that they are this big, the size of her shoe. You know, those little tea, uh, teacup dogs, I guess they call them, the miniature dogs. Okay, um, I have been watching this phenomena for, phenomenon for a few years, and you see these big ass guys with this tiny little shoe dog uh, walking around the neighborhood taking the dog to go to go pee. All right, once again, she is putting her mark on you, announcing to the whole neighborhood, I don't know how many neighbors, female neighbors there are between where you guys live and where you're walking the dog, which is probably several blocks away, um, and she is marking her territory that stand down, this is my man, do not mess with my man, because no man in their right mind would have a small little teacup dog. You'd have a, a normal sized dog, right? Okay, so here's some things to be aware of. Um, I almost never see the girl walking her own dog. So she will like make all kinds of excuses. Oh honey, I'm tired or oh honey, it's late at night or oh honey, uh you know, I did this for you so you should do that for me. Um no. Almost 100% of the time the guy is walking that shoe dog. Now don't you find that a little odd? I mean, if if at the bare minimum, uh wouldn't she be walking the dog at least 50% of the time? Mm -mm -mm. she's not going to walk that dog 50% of the time because how is she going to territorialize you and put her stamp on, on you? So that's not going to happen. So um, you need to be aware of it. So the way to counter that one is let's go on the walk together. And you make her hold the leash of the dog so everybody knows that that's her dog. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Um, those are uh, three ways that women use to territorialize you that you're now going to be aware of and put them into use, okay? If you want to find out more, you can check me out at DT4M, that's the number four, DT4M.com. Or if you want to find out more about this topic and others, check out my new book, The Caveman Formula, at uh, just Google it. Um, and the Amazon will pop right up. You don't need a reading device. You can load it onto your uh, smartphone, your laptop, and your tablet. So there you go. In fact, there, there's even a new um, feature called uh, talk to text, oh, sorry, text to, text to speech feature, which if you don't like to read, you can download the audio version of the book, and there's no charge for that. Um, if you have trouble with that, just email me, and I will uh, help you further from there. Um, info at dt4m.com. So hope this has been enlightening. I want you to be aware of it, and no more shoe dogs, okay? Thanks. See you next time.